Hey guys and welcome back to another Ranch and Ford tutorial. In today's video we're going to be advancing on our mission objective video that we made previously. So today we're going to be animating the widget so it slides on and off screen when we have it and as we're sliding off we're also going to be creating a blueprint for ending our objective. So we can collect an objective now we're also going to complete it as well. So let me show you what it's going to look like. So at the moment I've got two separate objectives so I'm going to walk over and collect this objective here you see it slid on and it said the quick run fox jumps over the lazy dog and again that's to show we can have multiple lines now if i walk over here we've collected we've finished the objective and that slid off screen we go over here we get climb up the stairs we go up and we get it like so i also show you that if i collect this objective and then i walk into this ending here it's not going to do anything as that's the wrong objective now i only have these arrows here just so i can see what i'm doing see where they are However, obviously you can customize these to be wherever you want, to do whatever you want. So obviously at the moment I have it just to walk into it, but again you can do anything you'd like. So this is what we're going to be making today. So let me delete this code and I'll show you how I've done it. So what we want to do first is we want to animate our widgets so we can slide the text on and off screen. So let's do that now. So I'm going to open up my objective widget that I have here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the scale box there as that includes all the text and everything in there. So select that. I'm going to hit the animation down here. So in the animations tab, hit plus animation. Now if you don't have this, what you can do is go to window and then just hit animations there and it'll take you down here. Again hit plus animation. I'm just going to name this slide animation. You can name this absolutely whatever you like. I'm going to select that and make sure you're in the timeline here, which again you just click timeline. Then we're going to add a track and the scale box there. Add a track on top of that, making this one a transform as I want to move its location. And open up the transform box there and then open the translation. What I'm going to do is just, I want it to start off screen, so I'm going to move the X all the way over to the right so it's off screen, or fuse could be left or anything, but I'm moving it to the right as I want it to start here and move on. So about 436 is a good value for me. And you can see here that's already put the keyframes in there, or you can press this button to add keyframes. And then I'm just going to drag this out on the timeline just to make it last longer. So it's going to last 0.8 seconds. Then I'll drag my marker all the way out to the end so that's where we are on the timeline and then I'm going to finish this off. So I'll move it back to zero on the X, so it's a starting position, and make sure I have a keyframe there. Now if we hit play to test this, you can see it's just going to simply slide on screen like that. And then we can reverse this later on, and it will do this to slide off screen. So that's a basic animation that we've just set up for it sliding on and off the screen. And you can see it's very easy to do, and it looks great as well. It just makes it look better than it just suddenly popping on. So now if we compile and save that, I'm going to go over to the event graph here. What we're going to do here is we're going to create some custom events. So I'm going to right click, add a custom event, name this slide on, and then I'm going to call the slide animation here, get that, and then just play animation forward, like so, plugging that into the slide on event there. And I'm going to cut the slide animation again and play animation reverse, and the reverse is going to slide it off. So I'm going to right click, add a custom event, naming this slide off. And now we have these events here, so we can call one of these and it will do what we want it to do, i.e. slide on or slide off. As you can see, you can also change the speed in here as well. So we can compile, save, and close this widget as that's all we need to do in here. And what we want to do next is we want to open up our character blueprint. So for me, that's going to be content, third person BP, blueprints, third person character. And then if you followed the last episode, you'll know that off of event begin play, we have this create widget here to put the objectives widget on screen. So what we're going to do is just disconnect the return value there, move the add to viewport out. Right click the return value of the create widget, promote to variable, and name this objectives widget ref, like so. As this is a reference to our objectives widget, and then connect these back up and put the return value of that now into the target for the add to viewport. And so this is just so we can access those slide animations that we just made. So I'm going to scroll down until we find some empty space, so actually I'll just do it here. I'm going to right click, add a custom event, and this will be slide on as well. So I'm just going to basically remake what we just made in the widget. Right click, add custom event, slide off. And now the reason I'm doing that is because it's a lot easier to access the character blueprint than it is the widget, because I don't want to have to be creating a load of widgets. So it's easier to just go through the character blueprint to go to the widget. So it just makes it easier, more efficient in the long run. So we're going to get our objectives widget reference there. And out of this, we're just going to call function slide on and the slide on will just go in there. So what it's going to do is call this function to then call this function. And we'll do the same with slide off. So again, in the long run, this is just more efficient. 
and it's easier as well. So this is what we're going to be doing. So we compile, save, and that should be good. So what we want to do now is we can close this as well, and we want to go back into our objectives BP that we made previously. So for me, that's content, objectives, objective BP here. In here, we're going to be in an event graph, and we're going to move the place out 2D and destroy actor out a little bit. And we'll come out of as third person character and call the function of slide on, which we just made. So when we collect our objective now, the text will slide on instead of just appearing. So that should be good. We can compile, save, and close that as well. And we may as well test this out to make sure it's working how we want it to. So if we hit play, we go in, we have no objective on screen, walk over here, and we have sliding on, climb up the stairs. And now that might be too slow for you. You can make it quicker if you want, or you can make it slower. Again, you just mess about with the animation and an easy way of doing it is just gonna be changing the playback speed in here. So if I put two, this should come on screen two times as fast now. As you see, it came a lot faster. So I think that actually looks a little bit better. So I'm gonna keep it like that. But again, customize it to be perfect for you. But we know that that now works. So what we want to do now is create the mission objective end. So to do that, I'm gonna create another blueprint. And actually, instead of just making a new one, what we can do is just duplicate this one. As that'll be a lot easier as it's essentially the same. So we're gonna right click our objective BP, duplicate that, and I'm gonna name this objective end BP, or objective complete, or objective collect, anything like that. And we're gonna open it up straight away. We can keep everything else the same, although I might make this arrow a little bit smaller, just so when I'm testing out, I know which one is the end and which one's the start. Go back to the event graph here. And what we want to do instead is we want to delete the set current objective and slide on. What we want to do instead is as third person character, we're going to get current objective, and then out of that, we're gonna get an equal equal string. We want to see if this equals the objective in this blueprint. So how we're gonna be doing this is we're gonna be putting in the objective we want to end in this blueprint, and if that is equal to the player's current objective, then it's gonna complete it. If they're not the same, it won't complete the objective as the player isn't currently looking for it. So then we're gonna move this out a bit again. Hold down B, left click to get a branch, plug in that into the condition. So again, we're only gonna fire this code off if this is the current objective the player wants to complete. So false, we won't do anything. True, we're going to come out of as third person character and slide off. So the text is gonna slide off the screen now. Plug that into true there. And then this can go into the play sound 2D and destroy actor. And I've got a new sound for the completed, which again, I'll also link in the description down below. However, again, you can use whatever you like. So mine's objective completed there. We can compile and save that. And this should be it done now. So we can compile, save, close those. Now I'm just gonna place in my objective end at the top of the stairs here. You can see it's essentially the same as that. So I'm gonna select this objective here and I'm gonna copy the objective I have in here. So my objective in here is climb up the stairs and we wanna make sure it's spelt the exact same way. So I'm just gonna copy it. Go into where I want this objective to end and paste the objective in there like so. And so now these two are linked. So this is the start, this is the end. And then I'll do the same with this one over here. So I'll get another one there and just copy and paste this objective into there so that they are linked so we can start and end perfectly like that. So let's hit play, we'll test, we'll pick up this objective here, it slides on, climb up the stairs, then we'll go over to this one and nothing should happen. There you go, nothing happened as it's not the correct objective. However, if we go up the stairs, it completed, so we've got the sound effect and it slid off screen. Again, that's a bit slow, so you can speed up if you wanted. And if we go over here, we can collect this one, slides on, the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog, and then we can click it over here, and it slides off screen with the sound effect. So this works great. And if we just walk into this, nothing should happen again, because we don't have an objective yet. So it only works if we have that objective as our current one. So I think that'll be it for this video, as we've done everything we want to do. We've adapted onto the objective system so that we can slide on and slide off the text on the widget instead, so it looks a bit better. So we've animated it. And we now also have a system in which we can end the current objective we have. So we can collect it there. And if we go over here, we can end it as well. So again, at the moment, I'm just doing it based on if you walk into a certain box collision. However, again, you can customize it. So you press E in a certain area or anything like that. For example, like you have a lever or a button, you'd press E or something along those lines. However, again, this works perfectly. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.